Hello email friends. Um, I have a couple things to show you but first we should just acknowledge that my nails are not what they normally are. Uh, this is not going to become my norm. I don't know why I did this. My sister is in town, she had some left over and I just threw them on for fun. Um, but it made me dive into the world of press on nails and I found some 94% recycled content ones that I have ordered to try. I've put them below but I have not tried them. I will review them and let you know because sometimes we just need one step better than we're already doing. Maybe 94% recycled content is that. I have a full blog post on back to school, everything, school supplies, how we navigated it with a more ethical, lower waste approach. Uh, the one new thing we do for the kids is shoes for school. All their other shoes are secondhand, but the school shoes are the ones they are in the most. Um, and so I do buy them new. She has already been wearing them, she loves them. Clayton had these ones last year, they held up really well. They're a B Corporation, barefoot, great for their feet, ethically made. Um, so that's our school shoes, but the rest of back to school stuff is in that blog post. What else to show you? Um, my hair is full of dry shampoo, and that is what is on the blog this week, because I thought it was already there. Uh, it's not. It is a very quick, low waste, low ingredient, no questionable ingredients, um, one that is a staple for me. Um, I made some more this morning, and I've popped a little recipe on the blog for you in case it helps. Um, also, I made myself this week a really easy, low waste, low ingredient hairspray. Um, it is just sugar dissolved in water, like a tablespoon of sugar or a couple of tablespoons in a cup of warm water. It works fantastically. So those are my two hair hacks for the week. I'm not a hair nerd, obviously. I just always put my hair up on my head and keep it simple, but those are two essentials for me. Um, what else to talk about? So, um, I have a work event coming up in Austin um, in a few weeks, which I will take you along with me on. Um, but a bunch of people who are going were talking about what are we wearing, what new outfits are we buying, what thing, you know, what are we buying? Um, and I went, oh, I better have some new clothes. I better get some new outfits. What am I wearing? I've got to fit in. Then I discovered I was going to be on stage and I went, well, right, we've got to have a special outfit for that for sure. And as I began to think about it and look, I went, wait, wait, no, I'm not doing this. I am not buying new. I am not bringing anything else in. I don't need that. I don't want to use my budget on that. I'm not doing that. Um, and I kind of took myself subconsciously or consciously through a list of questions. And I wanted to share it with you um, because I think maybe this is obvious for everyone else. Maybe everyone else does this naturally. But sometimes I have to take myself through why I'm believing something to turn it around and do something different. And I really felt a need for new clothes. Um, and so I asked myself this little series of questions, which is, why does this matter to me? And what is the perceived, what is driving this perceived need? I need new clothes for this event because everyone else is, because I want to fit in, because it'll be special, because, and identify those things and say them. So those are my questions for myself to start with. What's driving this perceived need? Then I can put that to the side because I've identified it and ask myself, what's actually my biggest value here? My biggest value is not bringing anything into my home that I don't need, not perpetuating the idea that we need new stuff, that a new event means a new outfit, um, that that's what we're doing. I want to drive reuse outfits, use them again and again, secondhand, but not even secondhand if we don't need something. So that's what matters to me most here. Um, and then I can hold on to that once I've identified, put the emotions to the side, identify what my actual biggest value is, then I can hold on to that. And then I ask myself, what do I need to decide and remind myself to be actually able to live that out? So, all right, I need to decide that I am not buying anything new, whatever I feel, I am not buying anything new, and I need to tell Jared that so that if I decide that I actually do want to, I have someone who can go, wait, but you told me your biggest value is actually something different. And what do I need to remind myself I don't need new to have a fun time. I don't need new to fit in. I don't need new to celebrate. I am excited to perpetuate a culture of not buying things that we don't need, to celebrating without doing anything new, you know, and what do I need to remind myself? And then I can hold on to those things. So then when I feel the emotion or see everyone else doing something different, I've taken a moment and gone through that thought process and it's much easier for me to do something different or do something that's not what everyone else is doing and feel really confident in my choices and Hold to my choices. So I thought I would share that in case it helps because I need to go through that so in so many areas of life, in so many things, the way that we shop, what comes into our home, how we spend our money, things like that. So 
I hope that helps. Um, also on the subject of buying, in England we have a summer back holiday, in America there is Labor Day weekend coming up, look for sales in the next couple of weeks, there are a lot of end of summer sales. Um, I don't think I need anything, I don't think I'm buying anything, actually no, there is one Christmas present I made by early, a doll, a rowie, um, but have a look. Don't use it to buy things you don't need, but where we do need those things, this can be a great moment to do that. Um, if I get around to it, I may pop some that I'm aware of below, but have a look. Uh, all right, that is all I've got. Blog posts, other things below, and I will see you next week.